Good morning, Pembroke family. It's another breezy day, so I am trapped indoors away from the from the winds that will cause havoc with the microphone. Nonetheless, as usual, I'm sat at my front window giving us a picture of God's beautiful creation. Before we get started, I've got a thought for the day. This is from Will Williman. He says this, The chief biblical analogy for baptism is not the water that washes, but the flood that drowns. Discipleship is more than turning over a new leaf. It is more fitful and disorderly than gradual moral formation. Nothing less than daily, often painful, lifelong death will do. So Paul seems to know not whether to call what happened to him on the Damascus Road birth or death, because it felt like both at the same time. I suppose one of the analogies for discipleship is that we are to daily we are daily to die to ourselves and instead live our life for Jesus and for others. Well, we've got a special treat for you this morning. Fiona has joined me for morning prayer and she'll be doing the readings and helping with the responses. We're, um, I'm reading morning prayer from the Church of England Daily Prayer app, which you can find on iTunes or um, Google Play, or you can also go to churchofengland.org and look up more, uh, daily prayer and then scroll down to today's daily contemporary morning prayer. Let's pray, everyone. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall, shall proclaim, proclaim your, your praise. praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let, let heaven, heaven and earth rejoice. rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. So now as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Psalm 118. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord proclaim, his mercy endures forever. In my constraint I called to the Lord, the Lord answered and set me free. The Lord is at my side, I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? With the Lord at my side as my Savior, I shall see the downfall of my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in flesh. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in princes. All the nations encompassed me, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They hemmed me in, they hemmed me in on every side, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They swarmed about me like bees, they blazed like fire among thorns, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. Surely I was thrust to the brink, but the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Joyful shouts of salvation sound from the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. The right hand of the Lord raises up. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous, righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. 
Come, Lord, send us now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light. Link the pilgrims with cords right to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Saving God, open the gates of righteousness, that your pilgrim people may enter and be built into a living temple on the, on the cornerstone of our salvation, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And hand over to Fiona now, reading from Exodus chapter 34. The Lord said to Moses, Cut two tablets of stone, like the former ones, and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets, which you broke. Be ready in the morning, and come up in the mountain to Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you, and do not let anyone be seen throughout all the mountain. Do not let flocks or herds graze in front of that mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone, like the former ones. And he rose early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name, The Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for the thousandth generation, for forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means clearing the guilty, but visiting the iniquity of the parents upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. And Moses quickly bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. He said, if now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray, let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. He said, I hereby make a covenant before all your people. I will perform marvels such as have not been performed in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you live shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. The Lord said to Moses, Write these words. In accordance with these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. He was there with the Lord for forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin on his face was shining and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterwards, the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in to speak to before the Lord, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out, and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. This is the end of the first reading. 
Thanks, love. Time for second reading, Luke chapter 4. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I can give it to who any, anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you do not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the end of the second reading. Thanks, John. Time for us to pray once more. So as we prepare for prayer, let's call to mind all those people for whom we need to pray. Thanksgiving for the lives of those who have left us and are with the Lord. For all those situations, emergencies, um, that we need to pray for, and of course all the things that we need to be um, giving thanks to the Lord for doing those everyday beautiful miracles that he has provided over the last while. So let's pray with God's grace, asking the Lord to receive our prayers saying together, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, through your grace, we are your people. Through your Son, you have redeemed us. In your Spirit, you have made us your own. We pray for your church, here and around the world, that all your people may respond to your love with open hearts, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole world, for Christians in your church around the world, for those disciples who are trying to daily die to themselves and live instead for you, for a renewed sense of mission and purpose. Make our lives bear witness to your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and those who are in need, for those who are without work, for those who are ill, for those whose long-term treatments have been put on hold in the midst of this crisis, for those who are affected directly by this crisis, whether it's the medical workers, families, or those people who are ill themselves, including and especially those on ventilators facing a crux point of existence. For each of us, we ask that you make our wills eager to obey you and our hands ready to heal whatever trauma we come across.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the good news of your gospel. Lord, make our voices one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now may the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks for joining us for morning prayer, everyone. Hope you have a blessed day and that you are a blessing to others. See you tomorrow.